Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? Today we'll be doing a review of the 2019 Tesla Model 3. We'll do an outside walk around, an inside tour, and take it on a drive. All right, going around the outside of the car, it looks like, well, not really any other car out there. Tesla's design language really stands out from the typical car design because they decided to completely eliminate the use of a front grille, something only gas-powered cars actually need. When I first saw this car, it kind of looked like a fish, but after seeing them in person, I really noticed that it's a really sleek, modern, and overall minimalistic design. All the curves around the body and the front bumper, as well as the wheels, are solely focused on aerodynamic efficiency. But the nice thing is the form also follows some very aesthetically pleasing curves that run across the side of the car and tie nicely into the rear lip spoiler that is molded into the rear trunk. I specify rear trunk because this car has a front trunk as well. One cool way you open the front trunk is actually by going on your phone and smashing that like button. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I mean, if you want to, please, that'd be great, but oh yeah, and subscribe. But no, the actual way you open the front trunk is by going on your phone, downloading the Tesla app, and you actually just tap on the front trunk and it, and it opens. The amount of control you get from just the app is pretty impressive. With the full autopilot option, you can summon the car, and I'll put a list of all the features that you can do right here. Getting inside the car, the first hurdle is figuring out how to open the doors. Since these handles sit flush with the door panel, you have to insert your thumb into the back end of the handle to pop out the front portion since it sits on a hinge. Once you pull out the front part of the door, it unlatches and you're able to get inside the door. It takes some getting used to, but it's a pretty clever design and I only remember seeing something similar to this used on the Nissan GTR. When you sit inside, you'll first notice the large 15 inch center display and it is basically the center control system of the entire car. If you guys want to see a full walkthrough, let me know down in the comments below and if there is enough, I'll probably just end up just doing one and I'll put that up in the right hand corner once it's live. One quick thing I wanted to point out as well is the visor mirror covers. Since its design reminds me of those Apple iPad covers, this is just another reminder that this car is more like a tech product than an ordinary car. The leather seats are super plush and comfortable and known for being really easy to clean. The one thing I'll note is that with the white seats, although the leather portion is easy to clean, the stitching used on the seats are actually not that easy and can get discolored over time. Just something to note when you're deciding on which interior seating color to pick. I'm also biased towards the black leather since it also includes a textured wood trim along the front as opposed to the white panel. The headroom and legroom is really spacious for a car in this class thanks to the full glass roof which you can also notice from the outside of the car. So in terms of specs, this car has three main trims, standard plus, long range, and performance. The main difference is range, motor count, as well as their acceleration as I'll show in the screen here. I think the sweet spot is the long range as it gives you the most mileage, all wheel drive, and a really fun 0 to 60 time of 4.4 seconds, which is way more than you can ask for a car in this price range. Okay, there's a lot of other features and Easter eggs I'm sure I've missed. Uh, feel free to comment below what your favorite feature of this car is, and yeah, let's get on to the drive. All right guys, so we just got in the car and it's on even though you can't hear anything. Um, so we're just gonna put this thing into drive, or actually park, cool. Nice, the reverse mirrors, side view mirrors dip. And rear view camera pops up. It's really high quality, which is really nice. Get to drive here. And let's go. So like, one of the first things you'll notice if you get in, the, in this car and drive it is the regeneration of the, the motors. So for those who don't know, this car has regenerative braking, so it doesn't use the brakes to slow down unless you actually depress the brake pedal. And what that does is it returns that energy, that kinetic energy from you actually driving into um, potential energy within the, uh, the battery itself. So you can actually get range if you, if you drive this thing right, which is a nice thing. But it's something to get used to if you're coming from a conventionally powered gasoline engine. Since where you would let off and let it coast, this is you wouldn't necessarily do that here since it's really aggressive. You could adjust that in the settings that way it's not as uh, aggressive, but that's a preference. I think if you really want to maximize 
the life of your brake pads as well as your range, I think the most aggressive setting is the way to go. You'll get used to it after a couple hours or so of driving. It's not that hard, it's not that big of a deal. So the sound throws you off, kind of just getting on the gas. It does accelerate. We're gonna do a couple some pulls here in a little bit just to get a feel for that and get kind of you guys that experience. But otherwise it's really comfortable. Like yes, this doesn't have the air suspension that you get in the Model S or the Model X, but overall the suspension is well damped, it's well isolated from the road. And they have to try a lot harder in this car since you hear less of that engine vibration, so there's more isolation kind of in areas where you don't want to hear road noise. So it's an interesting design challenge that Tesla has to face compared to conventional car companies. I think I barely pressed and this thing goes. And there's a another Model 3 in front of us, you guys can see from the front facing camera. So, and it, like, that's just a testament to the fact that people are buying these cars. Um, and Tesla saved our life. Thank, thank you very much. We're gonna have to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole uh, that's the whole point, man. <laughs> Dang. All right. So yeah, autonomy car, autonomous cars for the win. That was the Ford Collision Alert system that you guys just heard there. Uh, brakes were really responsive. I went on the brakes in addition to the regen, so it felt pretty natural, honestly. Like I obviously, thankfully, did not not hit the car, and I, maybe that was the Tesla doing all the work. But heck, it's actually pretty uh, pretty smart. All right, so I'm gonna pop over the horsepower and torque figures here since I don't have them off the top of my head. And we're gonna give it a little bit and just see how it actually feels because numbers are one thing, how it feels and how it delivers that power in the road is another. So we're going around 30 right now and we'll just give it some. Holy. <laughs> like dude, this is like, this is power that makes you laugh. Like it's, it's great, it's more than you need in terms of day-to-day -day driving. You'll get up to speed on any freeway you can pass pretty much any car whenever you want with the power that it has. But it's not like gut-wrenching. It's not gonna give you whiplash like the performance, which is kind of the tier above this. So you can mess with your friends and kind of like you know, go on and off here and there. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I might like give myself whiplash, but, but yeah, like it's, it's instant. It's the beauty of electric cars. Yeah, you lose that visceral, like, oh, engine note that sports cars have. But once you get over that fact, like, this is coming from a guy who's really, like, a, a car enthusiast who really cares about kind of engineering the engines, the transmission. I'm really into that stuff. And honestly, like, putting that aside and kind of, like, being open-minded to what, a, like, an electric car has to offer, it's, it's there to really, you know, impress you. So in terms of visibility, it's pretty good. So the fact that there is no engine in the front, there's just that truck, I mean, it's a very sloped uh, front hood. I mean, you can really see what's in front of you. It's pretty short and it gives you nice visibility looking forward in terms of, you know, if you're going to get close to a car in front of you or a parking spot or whatnot, you can really estimate that. On top of the fact that this thing has really good sensors that tell you within inches how close you are to an object in front of you. Your uh, eight pillars are fairly narrow. I mean, given crash standards these days, they have been getting more bulky, but one, this car is a five-star rated uh, for crash tests, and uh, two, it still keeps visibility really, really good. And the fact that you don't have a gauge cluster, your gauge cluster is pretty much your speedometer, and that's in your uh, your main entertainment screen, so forward view is very nice. Your side mirrors do a good job, and uh, one second while we just floor real quick. <laughs> This is crazy. I really want to put my hand on the wheel. This is not, it's not feel normal. So you can control speed with the right um, scroll wheel. So I'm lowering it down right now to a more reasonable speed. It's pretty responsive. It's really smooth. Does it, you know, there's no wheel jerking. Oh God, it's turning. Okay. But this is fully tossed on As you guys can see, I don't know if this is legal or not, but my hands are not on the wheel. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna change lanes right now. By, oh wait, all the way up. Oh two clicks with the turn signal and it will change lanes. Oh, this is amazing. That's really nice. I'm gonna go left. All right, so I think it saw something. Let's try it one more time. Okay, so I don't think it knows it all the way down. 
you gotta go all the way down. Okay, that's the key. So, all the way down. It's gonna find out there's enough space and it'll go for it. Oh my god. Guys, this is the future. This is where it's at. Oh, maybe it saw a leaf. It kind of slowed down there. You don't want to hit leaves while you're driving. That's a, that's a danger. But, other cool thing I'll show here in a clip is it'll detect whether it's a car, like a, an SUV, a sedan, it can send cyclists, pedestrians. So it's, it's cool how it shows that in your uh, in your screen, the screen in front of you. Kind of giving the driver confidence that, one, it knows what's in front of it, two, it knows it's like precisely what's in front of it. So, I don't know, I think that's a nice feature. It instills confidence in me that it can actually stop. I'm gonna intervene here and uh, come to a complete stop because it doesn't quite detect uh, traffic lights yet. So that's the nice thing with Tesla is with the autopilot, you do get software updates if anything's improved, any uh, features come down the line, you will get it as part of the autopilot, which is, that's, I mean, what more can you ask for? A car that will not go obsolete the moment you drive it off the lot. All right, guys, so we're gonna wrap it up here. Thank you guys for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe if you want to see more. There's some cool content coming in the future. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.